and we can now proceed with our next talk on hybrid uh, recommendations, combining graph embeddings and contextualized world representations. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Marco Polignano from the University of Bari, and I'm here today for talking with you about our last work, Together is Better, hybrid recommendation, combining graph embeddings and contextualized world representations. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, our work is based on the idea of hybrid recommender systems. What are hybrid recommender systems? This kind of approaches uh, have been proposed in literature because they are trying to face and resolve some problems that are commonly known uh, about collaborative approaches and content-based approaches. Uh, what does this mean? This means that the, uh, the idea is to try to combine somehow uh, this kind of approaches in order to obtain better results and more suitable re recommendations. So um, in uh, literature, we can find many approaches that try to resolve this problem, and some of them are here uh, reported. We can find, for example, the mixed approach that tries to merge the outcome of different algorithms, the switching one, the weighted one, but the most important for our work is the last one, the feature combination. Uh, in this strategy, the idea is to try to combine together different, different types and dip different representation of item and user features. So, what is the question that we tried to uh, give an answer? We tried to think about how it is possible to combine features and mm, different kind of features and representation of these features that come from collaborative and content-based domain. So the idea is that we um, would like to propose this hybrid recommendation model based on the combination of graph embeddings and contextualized world representation. So in a nutshell, what we uh, propose is to um, use this recommendation framework inspired by uh, other uh, big and deep networks that are, are already known and are already discussed into the, the literature that take into account uh, the user and item uh, embeddings as input in order to arrive to the final recommendation. So uh, we tried to keep this as a basis and to um, improve these models in order to use different strategies of graph and different strategies of uh, um, contextualized world representation of the content part of item. Uh, after that, we tried also to use this information for performing an evaluation of the model. So we evaluated it on two data sets that are state-of-the-art data sets, and we obtained uh, quite interesting results, I think. So let's start. Uh, the first part, as we said, is the collaborative section of the features, and these features have been uh, uh, formalized as graph embeddings. What are graph embeddings? Are essentially a, a strategy to uh, represent the uh, information that come from the feedback that the user is leaving to a specific item, and it's tried to represent them as a graph. And we can put this uh, user and item and the relation between them uh, as nodes of the graph and then translate it uh, as vectors in a continuous low dimensional vector space. So uh, we took into account two different strategies in our work. The first one is the TRANC-C. It's the simplest one, but it's the most performing uh, as computational time. And uh, it's very interesting because it's quite good for representing the one-to-one -one, uh, relations, but it's not so good for representing uh, more complex relations. Uh, the idea behind this strategy is to try to learn a model that is able to put as uh, close as possible the uh, 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 tail vector uh, with the sum of the head and the relation vector. To the other side, we have uh, the trans-H approach. It tries to do more or less the same thing by optimizing this kind of, of distance, but it's, uh, it is doing this operation by uh, projecting uh, the vectors into an hyperplane and then try to again define the relation uh, vector into this space. However, you can find more details about these two common state-of-the-art uh, approaches into their papers. 
To the other side, we have the content part. The content part, we decided to use some um, state-of-the-art, we can say, uh, new models. These models are the transformers models. And in the natural language uh, processing area, these are also called uh, natural language understanding models because they are very common in tasks such as question answering, uh, uh, name entity recognition, and so on, that, uh, that are tasks that uh, takes into uh, the account the syntactical part and the semantical part of the words. So, uh, for example, the um, old models, old embedding models like word to vec and Globe, uh, generate uh, a single word embedding for the same uh, word without considering the context and the sentence in which it occurs. Uh, for example, here the word write uh, will have the same embedding for uh, it's uh, used in the sentence, I'm sure I'm right, and the same for the sentence, take a right turn. Also, if the semantic is different. Otherwise, with contextualized word representation, uh, uh, these models are context aware, so they can put inside the model and represent somehow also the context in which the words are, uh, are representing. In our work, we will use uh, the BERT embeddings, uh, the uncased English version, and uh, the universal sentence encoder, that is another model that uh, is included in uh, the TensorFlow library, and it's very simple to use. So this is uh, our proposed uh, approach. Uh, so we can see that the two models are more or less similar. Uh, of the one in the left side uh, is the entity-based concatenation model. The uh, other in the my right side is the feature-based concatenation model. And it's changing how the input is provided to the model. After, uh, without considering for now the initial, uh, the starting part on the left, we can see that after that we have some dense layers that are used for uh, making the embeddings all homogeneous, uh, all of the same sides. Then we use uh, some concatenation layers in order to uh, go further and arrive at the uh, final step where we have a sigmoid function that is trying to predict the probability that an item could be suitable for the user. So let's go into the deep of the two configuration. Into the entity-based concatenation model, what we are trying to do is to put in the first layers of the model different representation of the same entity. Here, for example, we are providing to the as input of uh, uh, the, this piece of the network the uh, graph embedding and the contextual representation of the user. Uh, as I said before, then we have some dense layer for reducing and normalizing the data, and then a concatenation layer in order to go over during uh, uh, all the other parts of the network. We do the same thing with the item, and it is important to say that the idea behind uh, this strategy is that uh, we would like to give to the network uh, more information, heterogeneous information about the specific entity. This means that probably, we suppose, that uh, giving to the network a representation about the content and some in information about the feedbacks that uh, the user left uh, uh, for the specific item, then we can somehow increase the knowledge of the model over these entities. To the other side, the feature-based concatenation model uh, tried to merge differently, we can say, this kind of information because, as we can see here, in the first piece of the network, in the first layers, we are trying to concatenate directly the, uh, the same representation of different entities. Why we are doing this? Because we uh, were trying to um, think about the possibility that uh, having uh, this same representation of different entities help the model to formalize better the relationship that are uh, between these two entities. So we did the same also for the contextual representation, uh, obviously. 
Then we tried to do an experimental setting. So what we did is to work with two set of the art data sets. The first one is the movie lens one million that I think you already know. It's a data set about movies. And in particular here, we extracted from the BPDA the plot of the movie, and we work on it as a descriptive feature of the, of the item. And then the, the DB book uh, um, data set that uh, um, more or less has the same number of users, but as you can see, the number of ratings is more lower, so it is more sparse than movie lens 1 million. And here we use the abstract of the books in order to um, create our contextualized word embeddings. Uh, as protocol, we split the data set into 80-20 as usual, and uh, we uh, evaluated our model, we compare our model with uh, six different, uh, 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 sorry, uh, we did six, uh, six different configurations of our model, and we compared it with eight baselines based on neural networks and uh, three more basic, more standard baselines that comes from Elliot. And uh, we have also some other metrics uh, that are using side information. Uh, other, sorry, <laughs> other approaches that are using said information. As metrics, we uh, decided to use precision recall F1 score, MRR, and NDCG at five, but here for uh, the presentation, we are just reporting precision recall and F1 score. These are the results that we obtained. Let's try to go deeper inside the, uh, these tables. So the first thing that we can observe is that uh, the feature-based concatenation strategy is the more promising because uh, this strategy allows us to obtain better results on both the data sets, but it is possible also to observe very clearly that uh, we have two uh, combination strategy different for each one of the data sets. Because for movie lens, the best configuration is the trans H plus BERT. The second one for the DB book is a trans C plus BERT. Why we observe this kind of differences? Because probably uh, movie lens is more dense than uh, DB book, and as we already know, trans H is a strategy that uh, works better with end-to-end -end relations that are more common in this data set. So we, as expected, we obtain this configuration as the best one for the specific data set. We can also um, observe that BERT is working very good, better than the, the universal sentence encoder. Uh, after that, we can also observe uh, the results that uh, we obtained comparing our best model uh, with many baselines. As we can observe here, the differences in uh, the F1 score starts from uh, 5 plus uh, 5.85 till uh, more than 31 percent of increase of improvement into uh, this metric. And this supports our idea that combining, uh, um, we can say, graph representation and contextual representation of the items supports uh, our results. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, the take home message is that it is possible to combine these features. Uh, it is important to do that because we have some improvements into the results. And for sure, there is uh, a lot of space for future uh, improvement of the model. And uh, we are looking, for example, um, improving the network, for going to change the representation of the items in order to obtain something that probably could be also better to um, comparing the, the, the model that I have just presented. So, thank you, and uh, I'm happy to answer for any question. Thank you, Marco, for this great talk. Um, we have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, there's a question by uh, my colleague, Marcus. Shout out to Marcus. Uh, have you considered or tried other aggregation methods like summing over or averaging the embeddings? Yeah, we tried out uh, different strategies of aggregations, and we tried also to do the pairwise uh, average of, uh, of, the, um, of the embedding vectors. Uh, but we, after some prelimi preliminary results that we obtained, we decided to use this kind of aggregation strategy. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, also, we have a question by um, Diego Marino. So, could you share some runtime metrics that it took to train the whole system and, uh, and the machine setup? Yeah, sure. Uh, we have 
some details into the, the specific paper that we, we presented. Uh, there we reported uh, all, the, all the details. So we used Adam uh, for, uh, uh, as optimizers. We have a specific learning rate that I think it was about 0 0.01 and so on. So uh, all the details are reported into, uh, into the paper. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and maybe we have time for one more question. Um, so, can you share more about how knowledge and relations are represented and inferred from the knowledge graph? Yeah, uh, as knowledge graph, uh, we tried, as I said, uh, to use these two approaches, trans here, trans H, and uh, we compute this kind of, em of embeddings by using a open source library that it is OpenKE, and then we provide to the library directly. Uh, the items and uh, the ratings, and the library is uh, able to produce for us also this kind of embeddings. But as I said before, uh, more or less, um, I tried to explain very quickly uh, how this strategy works, but uh, as I said, all the details about uh, uh, the two knowledge graph embedding strategies are reported into their, their papers. Great. Thank you once again. Thank you. And with this